everybody welcome back to my channel today will be a kind of chit chat and go over my some lessons learned from 2017 um and yeah but i'm gonna start off with i only had five questions um from the video that said if you had any questions for me i want to do a q a and so i only have one two three four yep five questions i have them here so i'm gonna go ahead and answer those and then i will get into my um 2017 lessons learned so first question is from lisa with and so on um she made a comment about uh in that video about my plans and then her question was i would love to know how you came to sew and the very best tip you can think of how did i come to sew i actually was taught by my mother i grew up um watching my mother sew my mother worked um, at a place where she did um, alterations and I used to go down and visit and there was all these ladies in the room I just remember and it was in a hotel so it was in a hotel and they had this um, I want to say it was a bridal place and but it wasn't all bridal I just remember the bridal pieces but it was sewing machines everywhere and I remember people were always doing alterations and stuff and so my mother was doing that so I grew up seeing that and watching her why I saw um in my mother's when she got married um she made her wedding dress so I remember this particular marriage she had uh, made her wedding dress so I remember sitting on the floor watching and so I grew up um sewing until I was I don't know. I can't tell you what age I started, but I know eighth grade, which would have been around 13 or 14. I was sewing and um, quite aggressively, meaning I remember doing pants and jackets and stuff. And then once high, high school hit, yeah, that all went out the door. Other things got my attention and then I got back into it over the years. Um, but I will leave my seamstress tag video up above. And um, so you can see that the very best tip I have is to stick with it. And that is one of my lessons learned to stick with the process. It can get very depending on your personality type. Me, I'm just, uh, you know, I have lists goals you know I want to be able to check things off and get it right and keep it going and keep it moving and just keep growing and go 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 but uh, with sewing I found for me I have to kind of take a step back but keep just stick with it don't get discouraged the zipper don't go in right don't get discouraged that you know there's gaping in the neck or different things like that uh, but to stick with it so that is my answer to that question quilty gal says um, whatever you're doing with your diet is working. Your skin is glowing. Thank you. Um, she says, my question is not sewing related and I hope it isn't too personal, but how did you meet your husband? Was it love at first sight or did he have to grow on you? <laughs> LOL. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, no, it was not love at first sight. My husband, I actually met in high school, but it's not one of those, oh, you're high school sweetheart stories. No, we, we met in high school. We were just friends. We would hang out. Um, had a group of friends, common friends that we would hang out with or whatever. Um, as the story goes, um, he will never come on camera or anything like that. So don't ask that. <laughs> but he always had a crush on me in high school, but I didn't see him like that. I was dating somebody else and he was just a friend, you know, you would just see in passing. And then I did break up with that person, but I still had no interest. I just saw him about really nice guy. We would hang out. These group of us would hang out. And then I went away to college and and all that good stuff and came back and I didn't see him after that. I didn't see him actually, we didn't see each other for, ooh, was it almost 15 years or so? I think uh, it's longer than that, maybe 17 years because we both were previously married. And so, um, yeah, many years later, we reconnected and um, so we will be celebrating our seven year anniversary. And so, yes, it was there was no love at first sight. Maybe on his part. <laughs> okay. Your plan. Uh, Lori says um, your plan of tracing, cutting, adjusting, and marking several projects is genius. Okay. What is her question? Oh, I am interested in how you got from Wisconsin to Texas. Well, my husband and I have been looking to relocate for a very long time. We both wanted to relocate out of Wisconsin. We're both born and raised in Wisconsin. So we're so used to the winter, the weather and all of that, the frigid, the below zero, all of that. Um, but we've also, we've always wanted to relocate. And so 
over the years, um, it just transpired where we would go to certain places just to see. We knew we wanted to go somewhere warm. So on the list was Florida, the Carolinas, uh, actually San Antonio, part of Texas. Um, California was never on the list because the um, um, cost of living. And then we were like, ooh, earthquakes. And then Florida was like way too many hurricanes. And we we're in Texas and experienced the one. But um so anyway, that's how we came to Texas. And what we did was there was a couple from our church that relocated to the area uh, two years prior to us coming. And so we've been here a little over a year now. And um, and so um, we came down to visit in the summer and, and it was hot. I think it was one of the highest recorded hot days. It was like 100 plus degrees. Believe it or not, my husband and I looked at each other and said, yep. We're good with that. We can put up with that. And um, so anyway, that's what brought us to Texas. We fell in love with it. The couple showed us around awesome hospitality, showed us everywhere, different areas and everything. And so, yep, we decided that's what we want to do. And, um, and you know, it wasn't an overly rushed decision because we had been thinking for so long. So we knew once we made the decision, we're not somebody who's going to be like, oh, in a couple of years, we're going to move somewhere else. We're not movers like that. So anyway, um, Miss Lynn says, can you do a step tutorial on one of your P PDF patterns? I did that for the Lisbon cardigan. So um, that is up. I'll put that up above. Um, is it Ratia? Ratia Aiken? Um, can you do a step video for your cut and spread of the dress pattern you plan to do in December? Oh, that was the M6886. And so that will be coming up in a couple more videos. So stay tuned. That should be, um, here in January. So those are all my questions. So, uh, yeah, I know that was simple, huh? That took me seven minutes. Maybe I talked too long. Anyway, so getting into my lessons learned and kind of piggybacking off of the answer um, to the Lisa, Lisa Kish question. Now, I'm just going to run through real quick a couple of my um, lessons learned. Um, one lesson is thread. I do particularly like Guterman thread. I, you know, I've tried the Cokes and Clark. I have, I think that's it. Cokes and Clark is really what I have. And the rest is Guterman. Um... I've used Sulky and another brand for embroidery, but for, you know, sewing projects, I love Guterman thread and I would prefer, I need to be more mindful in my planning, but instead of going to the local, um, Joanne fabrics, get if here's a good tip, get it from Waywag, Waywag, W-A-W-A-K.com. Um, I'm not sure they may ship internationally, uh, but hands down you get way more product for the price than even if you got it on sale at joanne so plan ahead um the pivot method is something you all know that i absolutely enjoy and love to do nancy zeman i will link down below the videos i always talk about in reference that is a great method for me for those patterns that don't have bust darts now i've done the pivot method with the bust darts but i never um quite grasped on moving the dart when I did that. So it didn't always turn out right, but I'll be working on that this year. Um, again, stick with it, stick with it, stick with it. Um, I get inspired a lot by many of the people I follow here on YouTube and on Instagram. And, you know, I always think sometimes like, oh, I want to be able to do that. And it's just, you got to just stick with it and try different things. Start out with the easier patterns and then gradually build your way up. Um, there, I know there are several books out there that go through that. Here's an easy project and let's just build our way up and build some techniques. And so definitely if you stick with it, you will get better. Um, another thing I learned is that I love, I must, I must, I must prep my patterns and my projects. So by prep, I mean, I think I mentioned this before, I need to um, cut out, if I'm cutting a pattern out or trace off and cut and do my adjustments, maybe I'll take a couple of days to do that. And then the next day, um, I will go ahead and then cut out the fabric. And then the next day is when I start sewing. Me trying to do the cutting and all that, the adjustments and everything in one day is way too much for me. I just cannot. And it, it, it then it, be, it feels overwhelming and like too much work. But if I can just bite off a little bit um, in the evenings, 
get home from work or something, do a little bit here and there, schedule my time or whatever, and get some things done, great. Now that football season is over with, yeah, this will be a whole lot easier because then, you know, my Sundays won't be, you know, parked in front of the TV for the most part watching football. I'll have Sundays now to really do some prepping, to some prepping as well after church. Um, the other thing is... Um, uh, French seams. I did enjoy doing French seams. I did that on my sew over at Eve dress. The second one I did the sew along for. Um, I'll leave the link for the sew along up above. Uh, but very time consuming. I will admit that it's time consuming. It will take you know some time to do the do the French seams. But it turns out really beautiful, and I really like that technique for those lighter weight fabrics like that that I use for that Eve dress. Um, yay for ballpoint needles. Now I thought there, uh, there's a knit needle and a ballpoint needle, jersey needle. And once I decide to go ahead and, and get a pack of needles, I just got a pack just to try them. I don't think they were on sale. They were like $4 or something. You know, you can always get those on sale for less, but I want to get a pack to try on, um, knits I was working on and, oh, beautiful love 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 that um you know how you get sometimes you get that puckering and bunching um and also use if you um have that issue with your your knit eating up into the feed dogs or whatever use uh i like i use embroidery stabilizer i know you can use paper or you can use tissue um but the embroidery stabilizer so um it'll wash out anyway but Pull, it, pull that off, that helps as well. So those are two things, the needle and using stabilizer to kind of get you going um, to when you're starting your um, seam there. Um, make sure my other, uh, I don't know what number this is, but make sure your notches line up and make sure you are laying your pattern pieces out in the right direction. There has been so many times I did, in 2017 where I worked on a project or whatever and I was like why isn't this matching up it's because I didn't lay the you know sometimes I pay attention to the layout um the um, pattern piece layout um for patterns and sometimes I don't and those couple times I did not I realized oh I should have flipped the pattern the wrong way and then cut it out not cut two face in the same direction because I wasn't supposed to but I learned that early on, and so the rest of the uh, year, I made sure to at least m read the pattern pieces correctly, look at the layout, just to see if I had those instances where, okay, here's the pattern piece. You can't cut out two like this. You need to cut out one this way and one this way so it works, and then your notches match up. So towards the end of the year, oh my gosh, I was so ecstatic with matching notches. Maybe that's just me, but I knew that, oh. Okay, I got I had the piece in the right place and I had the right things matched together. Um so that was good. But also I use um because I'm not very good at remembering all pieces like uh say a bodice has two separate front pieces or two separate back pieces or something like that. I don't always remember that. So I use ma masking tape and just write down the pattern piece number and stick it on there. Or you can use washi tape or something like that just to help me remember, oh, this is the... And I also do that for if I have a fabric that has the right side and the wrong side looks alike. I will use masking tape or washi tape just to mark it and write on here, here's the right side or this is the front right piece, this is the front back piece, you know, something like that. So I do make little notes like that for myself as I am cutting out. Um, also, I need to, um, my favorite, I think, knits I like to work with are Ponte and Liverpool love both of those and so my my first sew over at eve dress was in a liverpool and um ponte was i made my um what was that my um sinclair pattern skirt and cardigan out of ponte knit they just sew up so beautifully love 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 them and so last but not least um my biggest lesson learned biggest biggest lesson learned is so my style and not so trends 
um, and things of that nature. I'll pop a couple pictures here of things that, you know, I think I've said this before, just completely off the shoulder things where you have to have on a strapless bra. That's just not me or things with little spaghetti straps. If I can't widen the straps or something like that, I'm just not going to do it. I like tanks. I like sleeveless, not a problem with that. Um, but it's just certain styles. I remember what pattern was that? I think it was M7542, the sleeve pattern. Everybody did it. I bought that pattern and I gave it away. As a matter of fact, in 2017, I gave away 200 plus patterns. Some of you who are watching have received those patterns for free um, because I, I just... I had a bunch of patterns that just was not particularly in my style or ones that I knew I would go and sew up or get into. And um, so, yeah, um, sticking with my style. And when I say my style, the last thing I'm going to show here is what I mean by my style. I know a lot of people um, say that and say, um, you know, I only, only want to sew things that are my style or my wheelhouse or things I'm going to wear. I particularly do like uh, have workwear. I like retro feel. I'm, I feel like I'm a mixed bag because um, then I can do the whole jogging pan t-shirt kind and, you know, thrown jacket grunge look. I can do the track suit look. I can do the suit jacket look on occasion. I don't I don't have to do that at work or anything like that. But if I wanted to, I could. Um, but stick to those things that I know I'm going to consistently and constantly wear um, and not try to go for things and sew up things that really I'm not going to wear. It's cute to make. It's fun. But where am I going going in it? You know, so again, I should have been popping up some pictures here so you can kind of see uh, what I'm talking about when I say my style. Those pictures that have been going, popping up here, that's my style. And it, as you can see, it is a mixed bag. And what I have not sewn, which you guys already heard me talk about, 2017, totally missed the mark on sewing anything after five uh, meaning when I get off work and change out of my work wardrobe clothes that I have something I have that pair that cute shirt and jogging pant mix or tracksuit cute to throw on or something like that uh, to, to throw on or say we go out on the weekend to um, a nice play or musical or say um, a night out you know to lounge for cocktails with friends I don't have anything for any of either one of those situations and the couple things I do have is ready to wear and it is very ill fitting and it will be donated because that is my goal. I will be making those types of things, um, this year. So yeah, that's it. I don't have anything. If you have any, um, questions for me regarding what I left uh, for you today, uh, let me know. If not, what will be coming up in on Wednesday, stay tuned. I will showcase the garments that I enjoyed making and the ones I wore the most in 2017. And in that video, I will show you the ones that I will be donating to charity. Um, there's a couple ready to wear items that I have that I no longer uh, wear um, and they really don't fit that good. Um, those are nicer items. I'll put those on eBay. But outside of that, look for that on Wednesday. I'll show you my most worn items from 2017 um, and, and the ones I enjoyed making, as well as those that will be going over to charity, the donation bin. So that is it. Stay tuned. And then after that, I will have my sewing goals, 2018 um, goals for the year. Um, that I'll be working on and some new things I'll be um, introducing to the channel. A couple little tweaks here and there. Um, so yeah, that is it. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. Um, and yeah, you guys have a great rest of your day. Have a blessed week and we will see you on Wednesday. Don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up this video if you like it. All right, bye.